Hey everyone, uh, Nathan from 444 PM here. So trying something new, um, going live for the first time on my channel, um, seeing how you guys like it. But basically, um, this is going to be a, a demonstration of a simple mod service. So if you don't know, like I provide you know mod services for Seiko watches. Um, you can you know bring your watch into me or or ship it to me to have modifications done. You know, depending on what you want, and then also, um, you can, uh, you know, have me build you a complete custom watch from the ground up. You know, using aftermarket parts and OEM parts as well. So today, I've got a um, Seiko Samurai that a client sit in, um, or actually, you know, dropped off to me because he's local, and he wants a new Sapphire Double Dome Crystal and this Yacht Master style bezel insert installed on his watch. So I've already removed the bezel, um, and basically I'm going to be removing the stock insert. So first I want to take out the bezel gasket, I'm going to set that off to the side. The next step I want to do is I want to uh, remove this stock insert. So in order to do that, what I typically do is use a, an X-Acto blade to go in underneath the insert at almost a completely flush or level angle so as to not damage the original insert so it can be reused if the client decides he wants to put it back to stock or wants to basically, you know, uh, sell it or whatever he plans on doing with it. Sometimes I'll even look at these a little bit. I'll try to describe what I'm doing, but sometimes I can't talk because I have to focus. I gotta get a grip on this. This will help with gripping the X-Acto blade a little bit. Probably be easier if I actually had the X-Acto blade on the uh, exacto knife handle but I find I have better control when I do it this way. Yeah. So then once I have it in there I'll just work my way around breaking the adhesive away from the bezel. careful to go around the loom pip as the loom pip is only held in place by the adhesive. It actually separates from the, the insert itself. There we go. So I got the insert off and now I can carefully take the pip off and then to secure that for the client so it doesn't get lost what I usually do is place it back in to the insert And then I'll get a piece of tape. Just blue painter's tape that I like to use. Oops, came out. And then I'll wrap that around. Insert like that, that way it's easy to take off. And then put that in a baggie that the original or the uh, aftermarket parts came in. So now I've got that saved. Now I just need to clean this adhesive up off of this bezel. So when I'm doing the rest of the work on the watch, what I'll do is I'll take a glass like this. I'll lay a paper towel out so I don't spill any of this. 
And then I like to use this right here, goof off, to remove the adhesive. Just gonna put a small little bit in here. And I'll take the bezel itself, and lay it upside down, swirl it around, then I'll set that off in the kitchen because I'll end up cleaning that off later. So that's going to do its magic while it sits and breaks down that adhesive. So now I can open this up and get to work on that. gasket here. Set that off to the side. Next is to remove the crown. Set that off to the side. Set that off to the side. Sometimes I can press the crystals out, but when they won't press out, I use my little hammer to tap them out. Now, I'll put the original crystal in a bag as well for the client. And I'm going to get this original gasket out. Sometimes I can use Rodico to grab them. And sometimes I have to grab one of the tweezers. There we go. I'll put that in with the original crystal too, that way the client knows that that's their old gasket and they've got a new one installed. now we're ready to uh, put the new crystal in but first I'm gonna go ahead and clean up any debris gunk whatever arm cheese I already cleaned the watch prior to uh, disassembling it so that I don't have any like loose dust or anything get into it when I open it and also just because I like to start with a clean watch
Now I'll inspect the gasket, the new gasket, to make sure that it's good. And then I'll clean up the new gasket. And then I'll install the new gaskets. I want to make sure that when you're installing the gasket, that you do it with a little beveled edge on top. Some gaskets uh, will have a beveled edge on top and bottom, so it doesn't matter which way they go in. But some gaskets only have it on one side. And then I'll look and make sure that it sits in perfectly, inspect all the surfaces. Because these are sealing surfaces, so I want to make sure everything's good. I also inspect the case back sealing surfaces, crown sealing surfaces. And I'll obviously inspect all the gaskets on the crown case back prior to closing up the case. So I'm going to set that off to the side real quick. This is the new crystal. I have a little technique that I do to clean each crystal prior to installing it. And that's rubbing alcohol on this. And then I clean the underside with the rubbing alcohol. using my trusty CT microfiber cloth that's provided with CT parts. And then I'll use a uh, little bit of a different textured microfiber cloth to finish drying it. Hold it on the edges and then I'll go ahead and blow the dust off. And then I'll lightly set this in place. And then I'll get my crystal press. It's a bunch of different crystal presses you can use. I actually have a uh, kind of like the Bergeon um, copy like press down press this is actually my favorite because it allows control I've kind of like altered this one a little bit this is like a knockoff or or a tech press Let me turn that off this is like a knockoff or tech press um, that I've actually fixed this little um, kind of just like solid round cylinder little block holder onto here and then I had a friend of mine machine this. Uh, he's a machinist, and he actually did this on a lathe for me. And this slides over this, and then allows me to rotate like that. And it has a little cutout for the crown, but it's designed to fit perfectly inside of Seiko cases. So it's the same inside diameter. And then I can place that right there, and that allows the crown tube to sit in there without getting... Uh, damage in any way but allows the case to sit flat and flush and then I can make sure that I'm I'm able to rotate the watch in the press so that I can ensure that the gasket is seated correctly and then I get really technical in how I do this I want to come down level with it and then I'll go ahead and finish hopefully you guys can see this I should probably move over a little bit let me move over here a little bit so then I'll come down and make sure that the crystal is as evenly placed in the gasket as possible. And I 
Actually, I'm going to change out this die that I have in here for a wider one, since this is a little bit bigger crystal than an SKX. Looks good. Inspect it. I'm telling you what, man, this thing right here is the best thing ever. Shout out to my buddy Jason. You can check his channel out, J Jay's TCB on YouTube. He's a uh, professional uh, eboard skater. In fact, he's just been approved for um, a. Uh, well, I probably shouldn't talk about it, but. Um, yeah, I'll let him talk about it. You can check it out on his channel if he wants to talk about it. But it's J A Y S T C B. Known him over 25 years. One of my best friends. All right, so now I'll inspect. Make sure that number one, the crystal is sitting perfectly flat at every angle in the case. Hear my little ship's clock going off in there? My dad, he, he uh, put that together years and years ago. Then I'll come in and inspect. To make sure there was no pinching, and that the crystal looks perfectly even inside the case. Which it does. So we're good there. dust that's left over in there and now I can um, make sure that the dial is perfectly clean actually I didn't do anything with the hand so See a couple little spots on here that Seiko allowed from the factory. Almost every single Seiko that I get, 
I love Sago. It's an excellent brand, but almost every single watch that I get that's straight from the factory that I mod has dust left from the factory on the dial. So I always usually double check that to take care of that for the client. And then I case the watch. Check that the cap chapter ring is perfectly even. And then I will go over and check for any dust underneath the crystal. good so I'll set that off to the side and now well actually sometimes I get ahead of myself might as well go ahead and close this up so now well, I can still take it off I, know. I only keep my finger cuts on for certain parts rest of the time I like them off especially on warmer days a little sweaty underneath the fingers there so on this I'm gonna come around here clean the edges of the case back off plus I lose my train of thought a little bit when I'm trying to do these live videos sorry I turned the commenting off on this video um, because it's kind of hard for me to comment on anything or look at my phone to see what you guys are saying if I'm working on watches. I want all my attention and focus on what I'm doing. So that's that. Get my Seiko silicone grease TSF-451 and my little handy toothpick that I use. I'm going to inspect the gaskets on this. Make sure everything is clean. There's a nice little hair that was on the rubber gaskets. Okay, gaskets are good. Clean the stem. Get a little bit of this. I'll put this on the outer edge of the threads. And then I'm going to put some inside the crown tube. Insert the crown or stem, I should say. Go ahead and screw that down. Checking inside the case for any dust, debris, hairs, anything like that. Looks good. Set that off to the side. Gasket's still good. So I will lubricate it.
I really hope you guys like this little live video because I've been trying to think of a way that I can, you know, basically um, bring you guys, you know, immerse you guys more in the experience of the modding process. I've had a lot of requests in the past of clients wanting me to make a video of their watch, me modding it. Well, that's just not practical because, uh, you know, it's a one-man operation, uh, answering emails, placing orders, doing everything that I do. Um, it makes it really difficult for me to actually film something, edit it together, put music, all that stuff, and make it look like uh, something amazing like Loomshot would do. Everybody knows who Loomshot is. Uh, how you doing, Eric? Shout out to Eric. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, that's just not my gig, man. That's not my bag, baby. Um, so anyway, I thought this would be a really cool idea because, I mean, it's kind of getting a little into the nitty gritty and personal, but it's giving you a real, you know, in-depth, like, actual, you know, view of the process. So there's, you know, sometimes there's going to be little things that don't go right. Sometimes, you know, hopefully, majority of the time everything goes smooth. But uh, I just, I thought it would be an interesting, you know, way to share with you guys. So, hopefully you guys like it. If you do, you know what to do, like the video, uh, thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and then, uh, you know, let me know. By doing that, I don't think you'd be able to comment though since I turned the comments off, but let's see. So then I reinspect the uh, gasket again, make sure that no hairs have accumulated on it. Go ahead and put it in the channel there. It's nice and even. It is. Blow the case back off again. And then set that on top. Okay. Screw that down nice and evenly. And then I'll go ahead and tighten that back down. I always look after I put the case back on to make sure that it's completely flush against the case. I don't see any of the um, rubber gasket sticking out and everything looks good. I'm going to tell you guys something right now uh, when it comes to Seiko case back gaskets. So when you do um, mods, you're going to always get, uh, this might be a little controversial, uh, but I got to say it. Um, so when you get the aftermarket parts from suppliers, um, there's certain case back gaskets they give you. And I, and I think that they um, get them, you know, from whoever manufactures the cases or whatever. I never use those just because I've found that they're a slightly wider diameter uh, than what Seiko uses. So I actually order my own Seiko replacement gaskets and with every watch that I build if the Seiko OEM case back gasket isn't um, in good shape I'll replace it with one of those all my builds that I do for all my clients 
I use those uh, case back gaskets because they are the correct diameter and they allow the case back to sit flush. Um, you'll notice on um, if you've had a watch modded by somebody else that didn't do that, um, or you've modded one yourself, you might have found that you can't close the case back down properly um, onto the watch. Um, and if you have had them watch modded by somebody else, go take a look and see if the case back gasket is showing. It shouldn't be showing. You shouldn't be able to see the, uh, the black rubber. Um, now, in the beginning, uh, before I found uh, my supplier for those case bag gaskets, I used the ones that came aftermarket, but I was never happy with those. I'm sure they do their job. Um, you know, I've never had anybody tell me otherwise. And uh, I don't know of anybody that's ever had an issue. But for me personally, I like to use what the, the right size is and have that on there um, so that the case back sits flush onto the watch like it's supposed to with no gasket showing. But you'll be able to tell if that's the case with your watch or not by going and looking. So I just take a toothbrush. I use a toothbrush for a lot of things. It's, you know, a new toothbrush I bought for like 99 cents. I use it to do like, you know, cleaning up of any grime and everything and stuff when I don't do a full cleaning of the watch. but. I always use it to go over the uh, click spring to get any debris off of it. And then set that click spring on there. And uh, now I'm going to inspect this uh, bezel gasket. This bezel gasket is in good shape. I'll go ahead and lube it real quick. And set that off to the side. And now I'll be right back because I'm going to go get the bezel and remove the adhesive that should just slip right off. I uh, wish I could take you with me and show you that part, but um, it's only going to take me a second. I'll be gone. Uh, in the meantime, you can, you know, look over my bench here and analyze it all you want. Um, in case anybody's wondering, I stand up and do my watches now. I used to sit down and uh, I found that this is much better for me because I have really bad back problems from, you know, work that I've done in my previous years. And uh, this is a lot better. Not only that, but I've lost a lot of weight by doing this stand-up thing. So, man, it raises up and down. I can actually, you know, adjust the height on it for whatever it is I'm doing. I'll be right back. Stand by. Okay, so I'm back. Bezel's completely removed of the adhesive. Go ahead and 
blow any remaining water off of it. Pardon the noise here real quick, let my compressor fill up. While that's doing that, I also ultrasonic cleaned the bracelet of all its arm cheese for this client. Now, if you're sitting here watching to me, the only time I want to deal with bracelets or straps is if I'm building you a custom, you know, watch from the ground up and you want it finished with a bracelet or a strap. Uh, other than that, when you're sending a watch into me, the only thing I want to receive is your watch head and the parts that you want to be put onto it. I don't need your bracelet. I don't need your strap. Um, I don't want to deal with that. I charge, you know, ten dollars extra to, you know, remove and replace. But not only that, if you're just shipping me the watch head and the parts, you're cutting down on all your packaging and shipping costs, um, making things more efficient, you know, and uh, less of, a, you know, a, you know, larger. It's a smaller package all, all on the, all the way around, so that I can, you know, send you back a small package. Um, I don't need your original box. I don't need your original papers. I don't need your special watch cushion case thing that you package it in that's like fancy that you bought. Um, I mean, all those things are cool. I love them. I have them too. But when you're sending me a watch, just package it, the watch head only, unless I'm building you one from the ground up, then, you know, obviously I'm going to build it out right, have everything on it that you want on it and send it to you because, you know, that's how you want to buy a watch. But if you've already bought the watch and you're just having me do mods to it, let's just send the watch because my OCD, it kicks in really hard and I can't stand dirty bracelets and so I'll, you know, go all ape shit, you know, on them, getting them all cleaned up, including the spring bars even. Um, so, yeah, save me some time and use the money. And just send me only the, uh, Watch it. I want to check something real quick. Okay. There's only five of you watching? Man. I was hoping for more than that. But maybe when I post the video, people can watch it later. So that's good. Okay. Turn the noisemaker off. Yeah. Bracelet's clean, bezel's clean, everything's clean. Now we can put the bezel gasket back in. Samurai bezels are a little bit different than SKX bezels in that the little channel that the gasket goes in is kind of a pain in the butt. Stay in there, buddy. What am I gonna do next? Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, and, oh, and by the way, you got a clean bracelet now, Roger. It's okay. Roger's cool. And he's local, so. When he's literally taking the watch off his wrist and handing it to me, I guess I, I can't really complain about the bracelet, but. I take a little bit of the silicone and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little four spots. One right here, one right here, one right here, one right there. What that does is just allows the bezel to have a little bit of lubrication on it when it spins around so that it, you know, flows smoothly. Plus all that extra silicone is gonna keep the uh, 
guzzle gasket nice and lubricated. These ones you got to be careful with too. And that because of the way that the bezel gasket sits in the channel on this, you want to make sure this is completely as flat as it can be when you're placing it on here because it, it can pinch very easily. And then you can not only ruin your gasket that way, but you can also um, end up getting the bezel stuck and then having to fight to get it back off. So you don't want to do that. So this is my other crystal press that I basically converted into my, my bezel press. I've got a bunch of different little dies and setups here for doing stuff. I think this is the one I want. Go ahead and set that inside here. Make sure this is lined up. That's the sound you want to hear. Nice 120 clicks, just the way it's supposed to be. Okay, bezel's back on. Now, I can do my adhesive. So a little technique I have for doing this, since I'm basically making a video to, for everyone to steal my secrets. Um, I take the uh, adhesives and I always cut a little portion on it so that I can easily install it. And then I come over here. I remove it from the paper. For some reason, I always like starting on this side. I don't know why. I get that nice situated down there. Oops. I work my way around this way I can make sure that this adhesive uh, circle strip whatever you want to call it actually goes all the way around the edge like it's supposed to instead of being off center or anything like that I can actually physically work it in to where it needs to be I like to take the uh, the actual insert, lay it on top, and kind of like move it back and forth to push down the adhesive so it holds it in place, or it actually makes it stick to the bezel, I should say. And then I'll go back in and remove the protective paper. And I make sure that the bezel is situated the way I want it to be. And I'll always go in reverse to make sure that it's completely, you know. So when you're clicking it around, when you're done, always go back till it stops dead. That way you know that like when you put your insert on, that that's where it's gonna be aligned at because everybody likes to rotate their bezel and then always go back to make sure it's kind of like locked in place, you know that lined up. And I check and make sure it's sitting flush.
there it is. It's all done. New crystal, new crystal gasket, new bezel insert. Perfectly aligned, looking good. Ready to go, except for one little thing. back on. She is good to go. Much better. So now it's ready to go back to the client. The original parts, which I will put in a container. these nicely in here for the client along with a cool little 444 p.m. sticker you can stick on anything and help spread the word hey thanks for watching I hope you liked this video I hope uh, it was an enjoyable entertaining and uh, you know I hope that I can do more so you know we'll see what happens but uh thank you guys for all the support thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I can be working on your watch soon doing some mods to it. All right, thanks.